Another day in the mail. I have a message for you today. In a dark and crooked world, I've come to bring the light of the gospel. That there is hope in Jesus Christ, and there is no hope outside of Jesus. According to the scriptures, Jesus Christ was crucified, and he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And he did this for you, he did this for me, he did this for all of us. God demonstrated his love toward us in dying for our sins 2,000 years ago on the cross. And he's calling all of his creation back to him. Every single one of us. God commands all men everywhere to repent and put their trust in Jesus. But before I get there, before I tell you the way of salvation and how to be saved, I need to tell you something. God created this world right. Our first, our first earthly mother and father was Adam and Eve. And God just gave one commandment. He said, don't eat of this tree. For in the day you eat of that tree, you shall surely die. Man sinned. Sin came into the world. And death came by sin. You see? As soon as they ate the fruit, as soon as they transgressed against God, as soon as they disobeyed the law, sin came into the world. And now we're born into a cursed world. We all have sin towards us. The same way we go to a doctor to have cancer cut out of us. Jesus Christ is the great physician. And he wants to cut the sin out of you. But it requires repentance. And it requires trusting in the Lord. So, since sin has come into the world, death is passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. That means you, that means me. Not only are we born into a sinful world, but we've all done evil in God's sight. We've all messed up. We've all went astray like sheep that's gone astray. Every one of us at one point of time has turned our backs on the Lord. But he's calling his people back. He's saying, if you hear my voice today, if you feel God's spirit drawing you in, don't harden your heart. Come to the Lord. Seek his face while he may be found. Call upon him whilst he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now you see, my friends, I want to tell you about God's love. You've probably heard about Jesus dying for your sins. But have you heard about Hosea in the Old Testament? Hosea was a prophet in the Old Testament. Old Testament, God shows us his love through the prophet Hosea. He commanded Hosea to marry a prostitute. And all the saints, all the saved people, God likens us as his wife. We're the bride and God's our husband. He's the bridegroom, right? In a, in a truly spiritual sense. And all of us, at one point in time or another, we've turned our backs on God. God's been there with his arms wide open. And we've had our backs turned to him. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We've turned our own way, right? And God sees this as spiritual harlotry, as unfaithfulness, as cheating on God. So... Yeah, with the same way of God showing us his love through Hosea. You see? How you doing today, man? Trusting in the Lord? No. No? I feel trusting in the Lord. He's coming back real soon, man. I'm an atheist, good fuck off! I pray you repent, man. This is where the Lord called me to be, man. What are you talking about? I've done it here before. It's all good. God's in my back. You trust in the Lord, man? Yeah, 
the Lord while he may be found. But going back to the story of Hosea, he seems to be a spiritual harlotry against the Lord. And you see, the same way that <laughs> the same way that we've cheated on God, he still wants to take us back. He's still got his arms wide open for us. If you go to someone else in the world, if they cheat on you, if they do the dirty, 99 times out of 100, that person will never take you back. But God wants to take you back. We've all been unfaithful towards God. We've all cheated on him. Just like Gomer did to Hosea. But what did Hosea do? He bought her back. He bought her back. He went down and bought it for his wife and bought her back. And guess what? The Lord Jesus has done that with us. He's brought us back to himself. Do you know how he's done that? With the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He's brought back all those that will repent and put their trust in the Savior. God's love isn't unconditional. It has conditions to it. He will definitely meet you where you're at. But you have to do it his way. It's his way or no way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to heaven. And it's through Jesus Christ. He's the door of the sheep. He's the gate of righteousness. He's the only hope for humanity. I'm going to read to you a little bit out of the Bible. Because this could be you today. The prodigal son. I want to tell you. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God. Over one sinner that repents. As soon as someone turns back to God, they put their trust in Him. The angels of God rejoice. They throw a holy heavenly party. It is pure bliss. And my friends, this could be you today. If you hear God knocking on your heart, if you feel His Spirit drawing you, don't harden your hearts towards God. Soften your heart. Let Him in. We're going to read from the book of Luke, chapter 15. I don't know if you heard it before, but it's the prodigal son. All right, all right. Praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works unto the children of men. Thank the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. All right, my friends. This is a parable of Jesus. This parable can be you today. You can be the prodigal son running back into the arms of the everlasting father. It can happen instantaneously in the twinkling of an eye, in a second. God is only a prayer away. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. He sees everything. Nothing is hidden from God. You can try and hide under these underground bases. All the military and the billionaires are building. They're, they're, they're ready. They know the, the coming of the Lord is soon. But you can't hide from God. You can go and hide yourself under the cliffs of the rocks or in some high mountains. You can't hide from God. He sees everything. He's with you. There's only one prayer away is what I mean by that. But let's get it. In Luke chapter 15 it reads, And he said, speaking of Jesus, A certain man had two sons. Meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. My friends, this is all of us. All of us at one point of a time. We're the prodigal son. We've turned our backs towards God. God's saying enough is enough. It's time to come home. Get reconnected back to your heavenly father. Just like the prodigal son was dead. And when he returned and confessed his sin towards God, now he's made righteous with God again. He's spiritually reconnected back to God. Like I was telling you before, sin has entered into the world. And for our sin against God, we all deserve an eternity in hell. We deserve death and hell for our sin. Pardon? Are you trusting the Lord man? Would you? All right, all right. And you see, all of our sin d d deserves an eternity in hell. But God in His love, God in His love, sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ the righteous, that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And God told Moses, 
sorry, God actually sent serpents to bite the Israelites. And God said, Moses, make a serpent on a pole. And everyone that shall confess their sin to God and turn towards the Lord shall be healed. This is a picture of what is happening right now through Jesus Christ, Him on the cross. He is that serpent in the wilderness, so to speak, on, on the pole, on the cross, that whoever turns to the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed. And we've all been stung. We've all been stung by the serpent of sin and death. And that's why we need a Savior. We need Jesus. But none of us are righteous, as the Bible says. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that doeth good. All of our good works in God's sight are as filthy rags. Where all is an unclean thing. You see, that's why we could never make it to ourselves. We could never make it to heaven by our own good works. It's only through the Lord and His righteousness can we be made right with God, with a holy and righteous God. And it's simple, right? It's, if you offend, if you sin at one point of the law, you're guilty of it all. And God, He is so pure, He is so holy, it's literally unfathomable. No sin can dwell in His presence. No evil can dwell with God. But we've all sinned, we've all done evil. So how do we get in God's presence? That's where the good news is. That's where Jesus Christ comes in. He lived the perfect, sinless life. And if we repent, we turn away from the darkness and turn towards God. And we put our trust in the testimony of God's Son. We get the Lord's righteousness. He wraps us up in a robe of righteousness. No more of our filthy rags. No more of our uncleanness. His blood washes away and can make you clean. Though your sins be as red as scarlet, they can be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they can be as white as wool. This is a promise to each and every one of us that repents and puts our trust in the Lord. But my friends, it all starts with repentance. It all starts with being sorry for your sin towards a holy and righteous God and getting on your knees being genuinely sorry and asking Him for forgiveness. Being willing to turn away from your sins. Being willing to turn away from the darkness and turn towards the light. It all starts with repentance. Admit to God you're a sinner. Not just that you've sinned. We've all sinned. We know that. We've all come short of the glory of God. But really admitting to God that, that you're not good. I mean, Jesus says that if you look upon a woman with lust in your heart, You've committed adultery already. You don't even have to do the physical act. It's a purely, you can sin with your mind. It all starts within the heart. That's why the Lord Jesus likens us all as trees. And the root of the tree is the heart. For the heart is deceitful and wicked about all things. And it's desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, we've all messed up. We've all sinned in God's sight. Our heart is wicked. Our heart is evil. Jesus said, From the heart proceeds adulteries, fornications, blasphemies, thefts. All these things come from within the heart and they defile a person. That's why we need to be born again. That's why we need to be a spiritual heart. And this is what God wants to do with each and every one of His creatures. Because each and every one of you, your soul is precious in the sight of God. It is oh so precious. It's so precious that he'd even die for your sins. He'd rather die for his creation than live without them. That's the love of God. That's how precious your soul is in his, in his sight. But it all starts with repentance, my friends. I must warn you as well. There's only one way to heaven, and it's Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die. And after this comes the judgment. There's no, there's no neutral spiritual ground. There's no, there's no purgatory. There's, there's purely once you, once you, you give up the ghost, you take your last breath. That's it. Finito. Finished. Done. There's no more chance for crying out for forgiveness. There's no more saying, God, I believe in you now. God, I want to be in your presence now. The time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Choose you this day who you will serve. Will you serve the true and living God who we were created to worship? Or will you worship an idol out of your own 
out of your own image. You see, in Australia, idolatry is running rampant. Most people, they, they idolize their, their jobs, they idolize their partners, they idolize their money, they idolize possessions and shopping, and all that stuff will just lead you to hell. It will 100% lead you to hell. Most people, you walk around and they, you ask them genuinely, how are you doing? And they'll be like, oh yeah, 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 I'm doing good. But their eyes tell a different story. You can tell them they're not doing good. You can tell them they're broken and hurt inside. For every one of us are broken and wounded without Jesus. There's an empty void within our soul. There's a hole in our soul that only God can fill. And we'll go to everything besides God to try and fill it up. We'll go to the movies, we'll get relationships, we'll go to drugs, we'll, we'll go in the new age, we'll try some, oh, I'll make up the truth myself. But it never truly brings faith, peace. It never brings that true fulfillment that your soul is looking for. It's only found in a relationship with your maker, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's what we're made for, people. That's what we're made for, to live in relationship with our God. It's time to come home. It's time to run back to your maker. Time is ticking. There's not much time left. We're in the end of days. Read your Bible. Pick it up. The mark of the beast is upon us. For he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. This is all prophesied in the Bible. It's all coming to pass with the implantable RFID microchip. People, the Lord is coming back soon. We must get right with God before it's too late. But you see, we're all wicked without Jesus and on our, on our way to hell. And hell is not a fun place. It's not drinking up and partying with the devil. There's none of that. It's a place of eternal torment and outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched, where the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. This is not a place you want to go, my friends. And I'm out here, I'm pleading with your soul to think about the meaning of your life. Think about where you're going in life. Are the things that you're doing bringing true peace and fulfillment? Because Jesus, He is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. And he said he is the Prince of Peace. Without him, there is no peace in this world. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have true peace. My friends, it's time to get back to the Lord. Get in a right relationship with him before it's too late. Man, we can, we can all hide behind fake smiles and feigned laughs like everything's okay. But I know what life's like without Jesus in it. It's, it's broken, it's miserable. Sure, we get some joy. Sure, we get good times. But for the most part, it's empty. It's dark. It's scary without it. You see, God made it really simple. There's the light and there's the darkness. We're either in the light path or we're in the darkness. Jesus Christ, He is the light of the world. If you're not following the Lord Jesus, how you doing, Mr. Goodfellow? You doing all right? Are you trusting in the Lord? John, John, are you ready for the Lord's return? That was my old principal at school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I um, love it. <laughs> I do believe in this book, sir. What do you know about the origin of this book? What do you mean by that? How old do you believe it to be? Um, as soon as Moses started writing it. Really? Yeah. And what date do you estimate Moses to be? Uh, I'm, not I'm not sure. Really? You should know. Okay, I don't know. I'm sorry. Well, he spoke to Ramses II. Okay. And we know when Ramses II was. Well, you know. I, I don't know that. Okay, well, well, I can tell you right now that it definitely wasn't at that time because Nebuchadnezzar's in it, as I'm sure you know. I thought you were talking about tongues. What's this going to do with tongues? Tongues. T-O-N-S. Tons? What? Oh, okay, I thought you meant tons and no. no. Okay. Anyway. Uh, are you a Christian, sir? No. You're not? Of course not. Of course not? How come you're not trusting in the Lord? 
because he's not real? He's 100% real and you know it. No, I don't know that. But you hold down the truth and unrighteousness. You'd rather God not to exist, but you know he exists deep down. Well, which God? Would the true be? and living God. All the gods of the nations that is idols, that is man's creation. There's only one true and living God, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Really? Yep, 100%. And what makes you think he was a God? He said it. Oh, so was it all the gods on here, No, no, no. He's proved himself. He's proved he's himself. Proven. God. Um, through his creation. You just look at creation. Jesus you know that didn't create anything. So yeah, he did. He, he, he did. Created. All things were created by him. Not and by for Jesus. Him. That's by what it Jehovah. says in the Bible. And he is Jehovah. You're confusing Jehovah with Jesus. No, 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 no. He is the flesh of the living God. If you think he's the body of the living God. Why do they disagree on everything? That's your opinion, but... No, I, that's obvious from the book. No, no, it's not, man. It, it is. You see, the, the Bible... Because Jesus says, turn the other cheek. And in the first testament, you get a very different story. Is it true or not? You see, the Bible... You get a curse Are you going to let me speak, Are you going to let me speak? Are you going to speak over the top of me? I'm going to speak over the top of you. Well, I can't have a conversation if you're going to speak over the top of me. No, you can't. answer all your questions. I'm a Christian. Are you? Yeah. I used to be an atheist. Well, I'm not believing God at all. But now I know God's real. And Jesus Jesus is God. And Judgment Day is coming. The whole world is going exactly where the Bible said it would go. Prophecy proves the Bible is true. Yeah, it does. Look at the nation of Israel. Our own conscience is right. Well, 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 so come and come. Come and talk to me. Come and talk to me. Why? Because I want to talk to you. Oh, I want to tell you how to get to heaven. That you can be saved from your sin. He loves you. He's your boy. Come on. We're not your enemy, man. Why don't you know anything about the book? Because uh, you just got to know how old it is. Like, that doesn't mean anything, man. Hey, it's everything. You don't understand You can nitpick you about every single question that I don't know. Oh, well, then I don't know anything. So do, tell well, me. Well, the beginning you, of wisdom is to admit you know nothing. Okay, so you know everything. The, the, the law is the beginning you know of wisdom. Amen. <laughs> <The fear laughs> you don't know everything, so you can't know everything. This isn't the book. This I know about. How do you know? Because I've read it and I've compared it to older texts. But that's what I was trying to tell you, sir, if you let me speak. It, it's, a, it's a spiritual book, you see, it says, The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are spiritually discerned. We need to first repent. Yeah, it says what well, 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 We first need to repent, and then God will put His Holy Spirit inside of us, and then we can understand the book. If we're trying to do it before we repent, before we have the Spirit, have it's just it's not going to make sense. Pardon? Have you read any earlier books? Pardon? There's plenty of books around the claim to have some spiritual significance, but only the Bible has the stamp no, of God's... No, I'm talking about older books than the Bible. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Only the Bible has God's stamp of authenticity on it. It's got God's man. signature all over but it if because of prophecy. Read the Look at the nation of Israel. Can man. you deny the nation of Israel is there today? Well, that doesn't mean it's a good idea. Get to the, I say you're against Israel. I'm against its existence in this country. Okay, so, so God is not, and God put them back there after they were scattered to all no, the world. No, the United in Nations put them back there in the 40s. Yeah, okay, so God's, God's won't pull on the strings behind the scenes. Yes, That's what he does. So. The hand of providence. And so the fact that they're there Have proves you ever read wrong. anything older than that? It proves that you're wrong. You don't, you, you don't Have you ever read anything older than that? It doesn't matter if it's older. It matters if it's true. It does this if is true. this book has Listen, stolen from the book of Elijah. Right, look, man, I'm talking to people that genuinely want to like, you know, actually ask questions. Some of us are really upset about the noise pollution. Okay. Okay. No, you want to see what we didn't tell them that we didn't ask. All right, well, there's noise. Let's see them do that. You can walk out of here and then without having to admit you. Okay, so let's go back to the first one. 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 Let's go this fucking pile of shit. Leave her alone. They're being told a bunch of lies through the mainstream media. You aren't telling the fucking lies right here. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, let's go. Yeah, Praise the Lord for his goodness. We'll the truth there. <laughs> for his wonderful works. And to... oh. hey, mate. What are you doing? I'm stealing something. Let go of it. You want to intrude into people's lives? He expected that. Yeah. This is a rent. This guy's a thief. This guy's a thief. Let go of it right now. Why did you assault my husband? Um, because yes, I disagree with what you're doing. Very okay, strongly. So, strongly. so what gives you the right to pull that out of his ear while he's preaching? What gives you the right to preach this shit? We've got the guy now. We're it's freedom of speech. Because he, he's stolen. Preaching he's, the gospel. He's got gear that doesn't. It's not illegal. He's stolen it. And he won't give it back. He, he won't give it back. I'm happy to go. Can I please? Ha can I please have our property back? No. Let's get the police. 7-Eleven Geelong in in. Uh... No, 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 no. Center of the city. It's, uh, what's the name of the street here? It's Murable, isn't it? Yeah. Murable. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, been assaulted, and, and this guy, we've got a hold of him now, I won't let him go, and he's got, he's I'm holding, not going he's anywhere. holding. Sorry? 
Yeah. Because I couldn't leave you two weaklings instantly, and you both know it. And he and he tried to. No, no, no one injured, but he's, he's, this guy's holding some something that doesn't belong to him that he stole, and he, he's trying to get away with it. And not to the I'm not trying to get away. You're not trying to get, get away. away from you in a second if I wanted to. Can you please send the police? And you people. both know it. Really? Uh, you're aware that that's a lawful imprisonment holding him. No, no it's not a lawful imprisonment. It's the guy. I'm not aware of that. We'll find out when the cops get here, mate. There's such thing as a citizen's arrest in Australia. Whatever you might think, or whatever the media tell you, it is not balancing the laws. Now, remember that. You want to witness yeah, the man and he won't let it go. He's stolen it now. Here, here we are. The cops are right here. Let's go. No, no, wait. It's alright, we've got the police here now. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks for the backup, man. I appreciate yeah, no, that so much. <laughs> yeah. like, no, 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 we were having a conversation, oh, like, right. we were, were talking to him, yep. and then I'm like, all right, well, you know, it's not, he's, he's starting to swear again, to be animated, I'm just going to go back to the preaching, and once I did that, I turned my back, and that's when he snatched the microphone, yep. and wouldn't and let it go. take off with it. We weren't and aggressive we at it. And I said, yeah. citizen's arrest, yep. you know, and, and I said, you've got to give us that. We're going to call the police. Okay, sorry, guys, find some dogs on What was your name, man? Colin. Colin? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Jet. Jet, nice to meet you. This is my wife, Stephanie. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Well, look, what I'll do is I'll go in a moment and obviously retrieve it for you. But just to clarify, you're not wanting to make a statement. Nah, man, not at all. This. No, okay. Um, so you're just a just a citizen passing uh, by. Having been passing by, I heard the good preaching going on. Yeah. Because I stop and listen, and this guy getting into a conversation. I was actually I started trying to talk him to try and draw him away because he was holding up the proceedings. Yep. And um, then I sort of moved away, and then and then I turned around and I, and I saw it happen. You know, he had the thing and started racing off. Yep. So then I moved over to, to restrain him because he wasn't, you know, he's stolen the stuff. Sure, no worries. Okay. Well, look, bear with me one moment. I'll just have a chat to this fellow over here. No worries. And yeah. So, um, I'll be able to see you, mate. Colin, I'm glad God sent you, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Praise God. Yeah, I'll just tell you what. I actually used to do street preaching in. Yeah, yeah a long time ago though, a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I was really glad when I saw you. I was so glad that someone was doing it to me. <laughs> I'm glad to see you, man. Because, yeah, he probably would have just raced off on the road and then you, you grabbed him, so. Yeah, yeah. Another day in the mail. Tell you what, like, time's running out. That's, for sure. that's it. Do you want to say anything to the cameraman for our YouTube channel? Hello, hello. Anything <laughs> <laughs> to brothers oh, well, you know, Yeah, look, be encouraged. It's obvious, you know, what's happening in the world today is fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And uh, time's running out. Everything in the world today is happening exactly the way the Bible said it would. Yeah. All leading up to this global system that yep. the Bible talks about. And uh, my own personal theory is that these vaccine passports are leading towards the mark of the beast. 100%, man. No doubt you know? about it. And so and you look at you look at the, the way the, the population is so, is so um, deceived by mainstream media. They, they've got one narrative going all the time, constantly going in people's minds and brainwashing them to a way of thinking. And uh, they're making bad decisions and they're going in a certain direction. And everyone that doesn't agree or has reservations is being left behind and being cast out. Not just, oh, we don't agree with you, it's you're evil, you know? So it's going on. And yep. so there's obviously something, it doesn't pass the smell test. There's obviously something more going on than meets the eye. That's and, right. Uh, obviously, we know what it is. And it's, uh, we're in the end times and, and we're coming up to that time that Jesus talked about, you know? Perilous times will come in the last days. And then we'll be lovers of themselves, blasphemers, proud, mm. disobedient. All the rest of that stuff, it's all happening right now. Yeah. And when you look at the governments, the way they make these decisions that they make that are so against the truth, opposite to the truth. Everything today, they, the decisions they make are so diametrically opposed to the truth. There's obviously more going on than just people making decisions on their own. There's a spiritual undercurrent that's dragging that's right. along. That's right. So, um, nice to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And uh, I love what you said before, but I didn't catch it on camera. Why is it that we're not... Um, having this man arrested for unlawful assault when we could. Why would we do that? <laughs> we, we're, we're commanded to forgive. If we, we don't forgive people, our Heavenly Father won't forgive us our trespasses. So we, we love all of our enemies. We love every single human. Their soul is so precious in God's sight. So yeah, like we, we love this man. We, we pray that he gets saved and we're going to get on our hands and yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, he's got to get the it's stuff spiritual back warfare. And all good. Yeah. 
it's a heart that's hurting. Yeah, 100. percent And it's a soul that needs saved. He's been hurt by the Catholic Church. He's been hurt by the Church, and this is this is why we have issues within church hypocrisy. People. <laughs> People claiming to be a lover of Christ or a follower of Christ and doing things that go completely against scripture, misrepresenting Christ and leaving people with a deep hurt and a pain and a hatred towards God because of the experience that they had with someone that claimed to love him. Yeah. And this is just an example of it. You know, he's not our enemy. The enemy is Satan that's operating within people who are wi wolves in sheep's clothing. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. With their mouth, they confess to love him, but their heart is far from him, and that's sad. You're not religious? You don't speak in the world? I appreciate your views, but no. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate your views as well, man. I appreciate can, that. Can I give you a gospel track? Uh, I would, but we have another job. That's the security guy with you. Right, we've got another job in the top. Alright, fair enough. So, I appreciate that, mate. And, uh, have a good day. Appreciate it. Anything else we can do, just um, as my partner said, give him an email or phone call, and yeah. we can help you out with your camera, right? Thanks so much. Bye.